Hey, what's up guys? I'm Seth, and it looks like we finally have some really good images of the upcoming Air Jordan 3 J Balvin. So J Balvin has collaborated with Jordan Brand on two other silhouettes, the Air Jordan 1 and the Air Jordan 2, and it now looks like at the end of this year we're finally getting the Air Jordan 3, which in my opinion is the best looking of the bunch. It's actually going to be interesting to see if he ever comes out with an Air Jordan 4, because obviously that one's going to be the most hype, unless it looks awful. We don't know yet. J Balvin was seen wearing this upcoming pair at the NBA playoffs, which did make this pair look a lot better than some of the rumored images of the shoe, and now we have in hand looks at this sneaker and I've got to say this is a shoe that I'm very excited about there haven't been too many J Balvin sneakers that I've been excited about it's really been 50 50 for me the ones wasn't a fan of the twos I really liked but it was mainly because of the light up tongue it wasn't really because of the design the design was you know eh for me, but this shoe I actually like all the way around. The sneaker comes with a tan tumbled leather upper with yellow accents on the edges, which I really like. It's also similar to the Union LA Air Jordan 1s that are releasing, I believe in two months. It also features a gradient hit on the midsole and the heel of the sneaker that fades from black to a red to a yellow. And on the heel of the sneaker, we've got a semi-translucent heel tab that on the right shoe features the J Balvin logo and on the left shoe features the Nike Air logo. Honestly, this is just a really clean look. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is the best J Balvin Air Jordan collaboration and it looks like it should be dropping around September second of this year. Next up, we've got a first look at a pair of Air Jordans inspired by ice cream. But first, I want to give a huge thank you to Ritual for supporting the channel. Do you have the perfect diet day in and day out? Yeah, I don't either. Ritual helps you fill in those gaps in your diet with no shady additives or fillers or colorants. Each one of these capsules provide 10 nutrients to create a strong foundation for your health. So I personally really struggle to find a multivitamin that not only keeps me healthy, but also allows me to know all the ingredients that go into it. A lot of these multivitamins on the market have all these crazy names that I just don't even know if it's like a thing or not. But with Ritual, you can actually see the ingredients that are inside the capsules, both physically by looking at them and also by reading the information on their website and in their pamphlets. In fact, Ritual even tells you where they get each one of their nutrients and ingredients, how they source them, and what each thing does. It's full transparency. You know exactly what you're putting into your body and how it helps you. Ritual is the obsessively researched and transparently made multivitamin. In fact, I actually take the essential for men vitamin every single day. Sometimes even before I film videos. <sighs> I just spilled water everywhere, didn't I? I did. The Essential for Men contains 10 high quality nutrients like vitamin A, D, omega-3, and zinc that are difficult for men to get from their diet alone. Not only that, Ritual is vegan friendly, non-GMO, gluten free, allergen free, and contains no added sugar. Plus, you can get Ritual delivered to your door every single month so that you don't forget to take your 10 high quality nutrients that keep you healthy. And not only that, the subscription has no strings attached and no extra charge. And Ritual doesn't just offer vitamins, they also have an essential protein range and a recently launched new symbiotic range. So fill in the gap in your diet with Essential for Men by Ritual, a small step to becoming healthier overall. And Ritual is offering 20% off your first month by going to the link at the top of the description below, ritual.com slash sethfowler20 and using code sethfowler20. So make sure to check out Ritual for yourself and once again, huge thank you to Ritual for supporting the channel. So the ice cream inspired shoe in question is the women's Air Jordan 11 Neapolitan. As you could guess from the name, the shoe comes in white, brown, and pink. And I really hate that all these Neapolitan Jordans are only releasing in women's sizes. They did that with the threes, and that was a really clean colorway of the threes. And now they're doing it on the 11s, and I've gotta say these 11s are really, really clean as well. The upper of the shoe comes in this sort of white or cream colored suede. The bottom half of the upper is wrapped in this very dark brown patent leather. And then the midsole of the shoe comes in white with the outsole rounding off the look in this semi-translucent pink. It's definitely got some Concord vibes to it, I'm not gonna lie, and that's kind of weird that they're releasing the shoe the same year that they're releasing the DMP 11s, which is already a similar look, but either way, I'm here for it. I think it's a really nice looking sneaker, and I love when they try good new colorways on the Air Jordan 11s. For whatever reason, some of the new colorways of the Air Jordan 11s either look like fakes, or they just look awful, which has happened a good amount of times too, so it's nice to see them actually put a really decent colorway on this shoe that's brand new. As of right now, it looks like the shoe is dropping for $225 on November 11th, which is very fitting, because November 11th is 1111. It's a pair of Air Jordan 11s. And hey, you know what? If I can snag a pair for retail or maybe my wife a pair for retail, I'll be happy. I'm going to go for it. So earlier this year, rumors came out that the Galaxy foam posits were returning in 2024. Now, unfortunately, those rumors were debunked, but it looks like we still are getting a purple pair of foam posits. However, it's not the Galaxies. Instead, it's the eggplants, or at least it looks like it could be the eggplants. So according to Z Sneakerheads, this shoe is officially named the Nike Air Foam Posit 1 Varsity Purple. However, when you compare the images of these two shoes, the 2024 version and the original version of the shoe, they don't 
they don't look similar. In fact, I think a lot of people probably thought that this SKU code or this style number was a number of the Galaxy Foams, and that's why there was this rumor that the Galaxy Foams are coming out. That's just my own thoughts. I'm not sure if that's what happened, but I wouldn't be surprised if this was a shoe that everyone was confusing for the Galaxy Foams. But either way, we're not really getting any of the foam posits we wanted. We're not really getting the original eggplants, and we're not getting the Galaxy Foams. So what the hell? I did, however, in Japan just recently pick up a foam grail of my own. The Supreme Foam Posits in black. I love this shoe, it's my size. I'm gonna rock it, super stoked on this. Got it for a crazy deal. If you guys have not checked out the video, I definitely recommend it, look at the top of the screen. But needless to say, I was kind of hoping to check all of the foam grails off my list, except for the Paranormans, because let's be real, they're never re-releasing, but it would've been great to have a pair of the Supreme Foams and the Galaxy Foams, the two foams that I always wanted and up until recently never got. Regardless, it looks like this Varsity Purple colorway of the Foam Posits is releasing in January of next year. Year. And while I'm not that excited about it because it's not the eggplant foam posits and it's definitely not the galaxy foam posits It's not a bad looking pair of shoes, but I still don't understand why Nike is pushing the foam posits in 2023 It's just not a shoe that anyone really wants to rock anymore unless you're buying the grail version of it moving right along It looks like Nike is giving us another panda dunk later this year However, it's not the colorway that you might think that it is other than the fact that this shoe is a Nike dunk and it resembles A bear in the panda family this shoe looks nothing like the original Nike panda dunks the upper the shoe comes in a hairy brown suede accented by a light cream colored mudguard and a red nubuck or suede heel area. The look is then rounded off by a black midsole and a brown outsole and overall it actually reminds me a lot of dunks it released back in like the mid 2000s. It's got that whole sort of retro dunk vibe to it which I really like. Also the tongue of the shoe has this sort of black and white static look to it which I actually don't mind and it does add some interest to the upper of the shoe. Is this a shoe that I'm going to go out of my way to grab? Probably not but I will say that it's nice to see some new colorways of the Nike Dunk Lows dropping that I think people will be excited about. A lot of the colorways that have been dropping recently are like monochromatic ones that are like all brown or all gray or all whatever. And uh, it's nice to see some really solid non-collaboration colorways of the shoe dropping this year. Actually, let me know your thoughts on this shoe in the comment section down below because I genuinely don't know how people are gonna respond to this. Are they gonna love it? Are they gonna hate it? I don't know, let me know in the comment section down below. As far as the release date for this shoe, that's not known yet, but this shoe is expected to drop around the holidays. So EA Sports and Nike have teamed up to create a Madden themed Nike Air Max 90, which I've got to say, I'm a little excited for. All right, I don't love the design of this shoe. It's like a brown football colorway shoe, which is fine. It features like the football texture on it, which I think is pretty cool. But it does look a little childish with some of the bright red hits and the bright blue hits. The reason I'm excited for this shoe is because I love Madden. I love it, I'm obsessed with it. I have it on like every console and I play it all the time. I suck at it, but I'm obsessed with it. I really shouldn't say this on camera in case I run into any of you guys online, but uh, I really only throw slants. I'm good at it though. But with all that being said, this shoe is officially called the Air Max 90 Play Like Mad, obviously because of its Madden affiliations, and most likely because Madden 24 releases on August 18th, and this is a Madden themed shoe, it should release either on the same day or a day close to the release date of the game. All right, the football texture on the shoe is cool. It's just not a shoe that I'd wear all the time. So it looks like there's gonna be another Amaman Yer Air Jordan 5 colorway releasing in addition to the ones that we've already seen. And this colorway is apparently a women's exclusive release. As I'm sure you all know, Amaman Yer and Jordan brand have been collaborating for the last couple years on a few different Jordan brand silhouettes. In particular, the Air Jordan 3, the four, the two, and the one. And this year, it looks like they're continuing their collaborations with a couple different colorways of Air Jordan 5s. Now, talking specifically about this new women's colorway, it's apparently called the Diffused Blue Amamanier Air Jordan 5s. According to Z Sneakerheads, it's got a photon dust upper, but no one really knows if that's gonna be leather or nubuck. Apparently, it's sort of a, a whitish or light gray color. You've got some blue hits on the shark teeth and a black midsole. In addition to that, you've got some semi-translucent and possibly aged hits on the outsole and also on the mesh on the side of the sneaker. And overall, it's not too out of the ordinary from what we've seen from Amo Manier collaborations, but I do think it's going to be a subtle and clean look. Now, to be fair, I haven't seen the shoe yet, so they could totally screw it up, but knowing Amo Manier and seeing what they've done in the past, they've always done a really good job with their collaborations, so I'm excited to see what they have coming. I mean, even though the Air Jordan 12 was not really hyped up whatsoever, and you can grab pairs right now, probably still at retailers, it's still a really great pair of Air Jordan 12s. The suede used on that shoe was awesome. The white colorway was very, very clean. They're great at collaborating with Jordan Brand, and no matter what silhouette they do a collaboration on, it's usually gonna turn out really great. Now, as far as when this women's exclusive diffused blue colorway is set to release, no one knows for sure yet, but it does look like this shoe is dropping around the holidays. 
So even though Kanye West and Adidas stopped working together last year, new colorways of Yeezys are continuing to surface that we've never seen before. And the latest one to surface is a new pair of foam runners in the gray colorway. I love the foam runners. I hate that we're not getting any more foam runners. They're such an awesome shoe. I grabbed the, uh, the black, brown, and blue colorway that just dropped in the last Yeezy day. I don't remember what the name of the shoe was, but either way, love that colorway. I've worn it a lot since I've gotten it. And this gray colorway is also incredibly clean. It actually seems like it's sort of a marbled gray, like there's some light grays in there and some darker grays in there. It's a subtle mix, but they are mixed together, sort of marbled together, and I think it's a very clean look. And it kind of bums me out to think about all of the colorways that we could have had if things had gone differently. Because I think Adidas actually owns the foam runner design, and so Kanye West can't use it. He's gonna release a sock shoe instead. So there's that. I'm not really too excited about it because, I mean, it looks like a sock and I make socks. I have a sock brand called Apothecary. I'm wearing all Apothecary right now. If you guys want to check out Apothecary, we're now in Zoomies. And of course, you can also grab some pairs of Apothecary socks and anything you see on my body right now through the link in the top of the description below. But uh, <laughs> with all that being said, new competition of Apothecary aside, um, I'm bummed that we're not getting any more foam runners because it's a really great silhouette. It's super comfortable. It looks wild, which I love. And uh, this gray colorway, I don't know if we're getting it with the next Yeezy release because apparently they still have a bunch of Yeezys in stock that they haven't dropped yet, but uh, I would have liked to have had a pair of these. And if I can grab a pair of these, if they do release with Adidas' next like Yeezy drop, then I will grab a pair, but if not, it is what it is. I don't know why I'm talking about this shoe, because we don't even know if Adidas made pairs of these shoes outside of samples, so will we ever get this shoe? I don't know. Next up, we've got a much closer look at what could be one of the most hyped up sneakers of the year, the DMP Air Jordan 11s. So for the last few decades, Jordan brand has been releasing Air Jordan 11s around the holidays as their like hyped up Christmas release. And it really seems like over the last five or so years, the hype for Jordan 11s just hasn't been what it once was. So I'm sure as a way for Jordan brand to increase the hype of the Air Jordan 11 once again, they decided to pull out one of their most coveted Air Jordan 11s from the vault and re-release it in 2023. And that shoe of course was the DMP Air Jordan 11, which originally released as part of a pack in 2006. They just released the other shoe from the pack, I believe, two years ago as a standalone release, and now we're getting the 11s. However, unlike the DMP 6s that we just got, this pair of 11s is pretty different than the original. And as you can see in these images, something is different. You guys look real close at the upper, you'll notice that the upper is no longer made of mesh, instead it's made of tumbled leather, which in my opinion is an odd choice. I guess they just released the Concords like not too long ago, so it's not that big of a surprise that they're changing something up. But to me, it was kind of a weird choice to change the upper of this shoe from mesh to leather, because I don't know if people really prefer the leather 11s over the original mesh 11s. I mean, don't get me wrong, the tumbled leather above the patent leather does make the shoe feel more premium. Of course, it is a more premium pair of 11s. It features a gold Jumpman, and I'm sure it's got a higher price point than standard 11s, but it's weird to change one of those popular releases to something a little bit different. I mean, I guess Jordan Brand's doing that to a lot of shoes. We're talking about one of them right after this shoe, and then actually the other one after that shoe, so we'll get to that in a minute, but it kind of bums me out. Like, keep them the same. If you're gonna retro something, keep it the same. Of course, the rest of the shoe is the white midsole, the sort of milky outsole, and the black patent leather, and all around, it is a very clean pair of 11s, and I think whether you like them because they're DMPs or whether you like them because they look like Concords, either way, it's a clean look that I think a lot of people will be going for, so it'll really be interesting to see the the reception for this pair of 11s, which years ago would have sold out like that, and now might end up sitting around for a couple days. But either way, the shoe is set to release on December 9th, a month after the very similar looking Neapolitan Air Jordan 11s, and just like that shoe, this shoe comes with a retail price of $225. Next up, we've got a better look at the upcoming, unfortunately suede, reimagined Air Jordan 1 Royals. So recently, DJ Khaled was spotted wearing the upcoming suede, reimagined Air Jordan 1 Royals, getting onto a plane, as you do when you're DJ Khaled. And I've gotta say that on foot, they do look better than I thought they were gonna look. Obviously, I would prefer them just to retro the Royals because we haven't had them since like 2018. 2017 actually. But I guess either way, I'm just happy that they're coming back even though it's suede. Don't get me wrong, suede is awesome. But uh... It's just not what I think everyone wants from a reimagined pair of Air Jordan 1s. I'm sure the story behind the shoe will tie in nicely. I'm sure it's a great shoe overall, but it's not a true royal. This is actually another shoe that I'd love to know your thoughts on. Is this a shoe that you're going to pick up or one that you're going to let pass because you don't like the suede? Let me know all of your thoughts in that comment section down below. Breaking news! It looks like there's a new version of the Mischief Big Red boot releasing in the very near future, and it's a collaboration. Weird collaboration. So I was taking a break for a second while I was filming this video and I happened to check my phone and all of a sudden this image popped up of a mime wearing a pair of Crocs big red boots in yellow. And I thought it was a joke at first, I thought it was a render or Photoshop or something like that, but it came from the official Mischief account. 
and I think it's real. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with the Big Red Boot, the shoe that Mischief dropped earlier this year. I actually did a full review on this boot, a full comprehensive review on this boot, which I dropped last week. I know it was late, but I wanted to find out whether this was actually a good boot, so I bit the bullet and I bought one. So if you guys want to check out that review, make sure to click the link at the top of the screen. I actually put a lot of time and effort into it. It's actually probably one of my best reviews. But again, if you guys want to check it out, link at the top of the screen. But it seems like Mischief, because of the popularity of the original Big Red Boot, has decided to not only release another one, but also collaborate with Crocs on a yellow pair. Now, unfortunately, as of right now, all we really have are images that they've posted on their social media account. There are four images of a mime just frolicking around Paris in these, like, yellow Croc boots with holes in them. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, they look ridiculous, but so did the original, so... <laughs> what can you do? As of right now, at the time of filming this video, there is no information as to when these boots will release. I'm assuming because they're dropping these images, they will probably release soon. I'm also actually not that surprised that Crocs is the one collaborating with them on this pair of boots. Crocs has done some weird collaborations in the past, like the ones with Balenciaga. Uh, so this isn't totally surprising, but uh, it'll be interesting to see whether the popularity of the big red boots will carry over to these new yellow Croc boots, because these are not as functional. One, because they have holes in them. These are probably dropping soon, and I'd love to know what you guys think of these boots, whether you plan on grabbing a pair for yourself. And I'm also interested to see whether the hype on these boots will be as crazy as it was on the original Big Red boots. If you guys want, I'll buy a pair of these. I'll drop the money and uh, do a full review for you guys, if you want. I don't really want to do it, but if you guys want me to, I'll spend the money. I know it's going to be stupid money for a boot I'm never going to wear again, but hey, you know what? I'll do it for you guys. And then finally, Z Sneakerheads has posted on his Instagram account images of the upcoming 2024 Jordan brand spring releases. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. There's a lot of sneakers dropping, but there's not that much heat. It's unfortunate. Maybe that's why Jordan brand is like fired some people and is hiring some new people because this is just not, it's not that great. But within this group of a lot of sneakers that may or may not be that great, we do have some winners, which I'm excited about. So I'm just going to go through a few of these sneakers and let you guys know what I think. The first shoe releases on on January 13th and is the Air Jordan 3 White Navy. So this shoe is kind of like a true blue white cement style sneaker, but instead of having, you know, red hits or black hits or whatever, you've got like a dark navy hit. It reminds me a lot of the Wizards 3s. It's not that different. I don't know why they're dropping such a similar shoe so recently after the Wizard 3s, but it is what it is. On January 27th, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Yellow Ochres. It may or may not look like that. Z Sneakerhead's renders usually look better than the actual shoe that releases, so Unfortunately, it could look a lot worse than this. We'll have to wait and see. Some other notable releases are on February 3rd. We've got the Jordan 6 Yellow Ochre. It's pretty much uh, an Air Jordan 6 Carmine with yellow instead of red. On the 10th, we've got the Air Jordan 13 Blue Gray. Again, not that exciting. We do have the Lightnings dropping on the same day on the Air Jordan 17s, which maybe some people will be excited about, but it's not that crazy. Following that up, on the 14th and the 16th, we've got two different metallic Air Jordan 1s dropping. On the 14th, we've got the White Gold Air Jordan 1 Women's Metallic. And then on the 16th, we've got the Air Jordan 1 metallic burgundy dropping. It's apparently an 85 release, which I am excited about. I love the 85 cut Jordan 1s. It's a decent colorway. I'm excited about it. It looks a lot like the original red metallic Air Jordan 1s, but it's not exactly the same, at least not based on these renders. On the 15th, we've got the new Trophy Room Air Jordan 1 Low, which we don't actually know what that shoe's gonna look like yet, but uh, it's exciting to know that there is something coming out of Trophy Room. It's probably not gonna be a Chicago colorway though, so keep that in mind. And then on February 17th, we've got the release that everyone's excited about, probably the best release out of this entire set of like three or four months, and that's the Air Jordan 4 Bread Reimagines. Now, like I said about the Royal Reimagines that we just talked about, this shoe switched out the original material for a new material, so in this case, it switched from suede to leather, which is the opposite of what the Royals did. Not sure why they're doing that. I'm not sure why they decided to uh, ruin a really great silhouette. That being said, I, I do think that the leather looks better on the Air Jordan 4 Breads than the suede looks on the Air Jordan 1 Royals. Neither of them look bad, but they're just not exactly what I think people wanted. But either way, dropping on the 17th, it's still going to be a hot shoe. The Air Jordan 4 is still like the most popular silhouette out right now. So absolutely going to be a popular sneaker nonetheless. On the 23rd, we've got a pair of Air Jordan 1s. I believe it's the Air Jordan 1. I can't find it in this list. Oh, the Air Jordan 1 black and white. And then on the next page, we've got a uh, some more like not that exciting stuff. I guess the most exciting stuff out of this are the Air Jordan 1 Lows. We've got the neutral grays and the uh, blue metallics. Both really great original colorways. But uh, other than that, I mean, there's fours dropping on the 16th, on March 16th. They're fine. They're women's only release. They're the sale in gold colorway. So there's that. But unfortunately, other than the fours, it looks like Jordan brand is really kind of leaving us out to dry. They're not giving us anything good. Like this year, the beginning of the year was amazing. In 2024, as of right now, it's not shaping up to be that great. But you never know. There could be some collaborations that we don't know about yet that are absolutely fire. There could be more releases that they haven't even announced yet or I guess haven't leaked yet, which could be amazing. But we'll just have to wait and see. But hey, that pretty much wraps things up for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you all in the next one.